Hey, what's up, guys? It's Apollo Uchiha here, back with the next part of What If Naruto was raised by Chirai and Tsunade. And before continuing this video, if you haven't, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you like the content of this channel. And without further ado, let's continue with our story. After 30 minutes that felt like hours, Tsunade was finally out of danger. She's an made an admirable effort, closing her wounds and leaving no effects. Still, Tsunade had lost quite some blood and felt awfully weak. She doubted she could fight again. Still, that didn't mean she couldn't be of any help. Tsunade-sama, how do you feel? Shizune asked as she helped her master to get up on her feet. Much better now, thanks to you. Should I fetch the kids? Absolutely not. The kids will stay in the shelter until things calm down a little bit. Besides, we have still some work to do. Tsunade replied as she soaked her fingers with the wet blood of her wound and made five hand seals. Summoning Jutsu! Up from a cloud of smoke, a massive white slug with a blue back appeared. Katsuyu, the village is under attack. I need you to reach all the wounded and use our link to let me heal them. Tsunade instructed, but ignore the Uchiha. They're the ones who are behind this attack. Understood, Tsunade-sama. Katsuya replied before splitting into smaller clones of herself and spreading throughout the village. Tsunade-sama, are you sure you can do this? The immense network healing requires a lot of chakra and you just sustained a potentially fatal injury. The lens Tsunade was willing to push herself worried her apprentice to no end. I know, that's why I'm going to use part of your chakra too, if you don't mind. Of course I don't, but still, the amount of energy this Yurtsu requires could mean your death. I would die today, Shizune. You don't have to worry about that. Do you think I'm going to leave you and the kids alone with Jiraiya? Sonari chuckled weakly. Now come on, we have a village to save. Sonari and Shizune sat down in front of each other, holding their hands and started to channel their chakra towards Katsuyu. Link break. During his long life, Haruzen Sarutobi was a man that had been present in a myriad of battle, especially during the two first wars that occurred. Some he won, some he lost, all in which he managed to escape alive. Some against ninjas of every major villages, others against ninjas of minor villages, and sometimes against independent clans. Hell, he even fought against the strongest tail beast and lived to tell the tale, something only Hashirama did before. Paradoxically, it was all these battles and the deaths that ensued that shaped Sarutobi into a man whose goal was the pursuit of peace and understanding, a goal he tried to instill on his students with a varying degree of success and a single catastrophic failure. Because no man or woman should go through what the third Hokage went through, and truth to be told, he turned out relatively fine unlike his friend Danzo Shimura whose experience was just as extensive and gruesome, yet he turned into an unemotional, unmerciful extremist. This wasn't also the first time that either him or a predecessor had to fight against a traitor. He had fought against Orochimaru many years ago when the Anbu discovered the unethical experiments he was conducting and to this day still wonders if he still should have killed his former student when he got the chance and the first Tsukage had to fight against his former friend Madara Uchiha. But even then, Orochimaru and Madara were just individuals with an unchecked ambition. This is the first time an entire clan revolted against Konoha. While part of him remembered Tobirama Sensei's warning about the Uchiha being dangerous, another part couldn't help but make him feel that this was his fault for letting this happen and not putting more effort in repairing the relationship between the Uchiha and the village. And now surrounded by Uchiha, Patrick and his elite ninja, Sarutobi knew he was going to die. He wasn't afraid to just die, though he never hesitated to take potentially suicide missions, but the fact that the village would be just an equally or even greater awful state than it was after the QB attack. Just like his predecessor and his one successor, it seemed that it was the Hokage's fate to die, protecting the village from its enemies, but in Sarutobi's case, he'd die fighting against fellow villagers. But before we start, answer me one last thing. Sarutobi said, what happened to Shisui Uchiha? Shisui, why do you ask? Fuaku was puzzled. Was he some sort of double agent of yours or what? Yes, he had a plan to stop you, but I never heard of him after the last time we spoke. Was he found out by your peers? We weren't aware of Shisui's treachery, but given his friendship with Itachi, it shouldn't be a surprise. But to answer your question, the last time any of my clansmen saw Shisui, he was talking with some Anbu. Anbu, that can't be right, unless, oh no. Danzo, what have you done? There was a moment in realization. On top of that, you can't even keep your subordinates under tabs. It's amazing this village has lasted this long. 
as it did. But fear not, Hiruzen. A new golden era is about to begin. But first, we must get rid of the relics of the past. Fukaku shouted as his hands flew through Hansel's fire release, great fireball jutsu. Do all Uchi has loved this jutsu? Man. Anyways, on to our story. Fukaku breathed a massive fireball at Hiruzen. The old Hokage proven to be deceptively fast for somebody of his age and dodged the flaming projectile jumping aside. However, two Uchihas were already waiting for him, their katanas ready, coming down on his head. With a quick hand movement, a large black staff with golden tips appeared on Hiruzen's hands, blocking the double blow. Much to the to surprise of Uchihas, taking advantage of their states, Hiruzen pushed their swords aside and smacked them on their faces. A trio of Uchihas leaped at him, and while they were in the mid-air, they pulled some shurikens from their pouches and tossed them at Hiruzen. Behind you, shuriken, Rain! The staff shouted, surprising some of the Uchihas. Hiruzen merely nodded and formed many hand seals as fast as he could. Earth release, Earth Dome Jutsu. The ground started to shake, and in an instant, the Hokage was protected by a dense dome of rock that stopped all shurikens. Break the dome now! Fugaku ordered. A female Uchiha joined, nodded, and went through several hand seals. Lightning release. Mighty thunder. The Uchiha woman put her hands together above her head, and they started to crackle with lightning. In a swift motion, she brought her hands forward, releasing several streams of lightning that shattered the rock dome Sartobi was using to hide. Before it was completely destroyed, Sartobi leaped from it. He pulled out a sealing scroll and unsealed a Fuma shuriken. He tossed it before making a hand seal. Shadow clone ju shuriken jutsu. Suddenly, the single Fuma Shuriken became 20. The Uchiha trio tried to avoid the rain of metallic deaths and expect one out of them managed to avoid the giant weapons. Alright, one down, let's see if I can get more lucky shots. Sardabi thought as he landed. The corner of his eye caught another Uchiha forming a hand seal. Fire release. Heat orbs barrage. Several spherical yellow fireballs appeared around the Uchiha, almost like they were miniature stairs and with a hand motion, he directed them at the Hokage. Running towards the attacker, Hiruzen spun his staff as fast as he could to deflect the heat orbs, and upon reaching the Uchiha, he swung his mighty weapon at him. The Uchiha jumped aside, but much to his shock, a hairy white haired arm reached from the staff and grabbed the unfortunate Uchiha's neck. With a sickening crunch, the Uchiha ceased to be. Be careful with the staff. It's actually the Monkey King Anima, a boss summon. It's extremely dangerous, Fugaku warned to his remaining clansmen. New plan. I'll fight him directly. The rest of you cover me. The Uchiha Patrick dashed at Sarato, his katana ready to slice him. Both men clashed, their weapons hitting and parrying each other's blow. Whenever the other Uchiha saw an opening, they used a fire jutsu and propelled the Hokage with the Kunai or Shuriken. Unfortunately, some of these weapons found their marks. A poorly timed fireball almost hit Fugaku, forcing the Uchiha to leap to jump backwards, leaving Sarutobi some time and space to breathe. Time he was going to use wisely. It was about time to use the Jutsu his two mentors developed in order to fight the Uchiha and other clans with specific eye powers. He formed a handle. Yin release. Barrage of darkness. A mentality of shadow covered the entire Hokage tower. Not even the Sharingan would be able to see through this Jutsu. However, due to his dwindling chakra, Sarutobi could only keep this Jutsu active for several seconds. Kenichi, track the Hokage now. Fukaku shot on it. The Fuku sensor, the Uchiha sensor, stammered before making a hand seal. In no time, the lo he located the Hokage. I got him. He's behind. Ugh. Naturally, Hiruzen wasn't stupid enough to not target the sensor ninja first. Kenichi! Other Uchiha yelled and thus marking his position for Sarutobi. The Hokage suddenly dashed towards him and broke his skull with a well placed hit to the head with the adamantium staff. Sarutobi found it himself unable to keep the jutsu activated and the darkness receded. Fukaku contemplated in disgust the bodies of the dead Uchiha that the Hokage had killed. Even in your old age, you were one resilient son of a bitch. Did somebody tell you that? Fukaku spat, glaring at Hiruzen. Quite a few times, in fact. It's a part of the job description, you know. Sarutobi replied, allowing himself to chuckle. To think that you killed four of my men already. There's nobody else but you to blame for their deaths. I know that's why now I have to make sure that their sacrifice isn't in vain. Ning breaks. Send your residence underground shelter. Naruto couldn't help but feel amazed at the sheer foresight his parents had when they built the underground shelter. It consisted mostly in a massive single room, as big as any, if two floors of their house. There were multiple shelters, shelves full of canned food and bottled water, as well as amount of medical supplies. While there was no visible decoration, there was some for furniture as well such as a large table, a few chairs, a pair of couches, and a pair of closets. And just like Shizune said, there was even a bathroom, which had a hefty supply of toilet paper. The walls were almost entirely covered in paper seals, Naruto managed to identify them 
a few of them at least, such as armor seals and shield seals. The former were used to increase the hardness of whatever it was applied to and the latter was used to nullify chakra based attacks, mostly ninjutsu. There were also one way silence seals which wouldn't let any sound out of the room but it would let the occupants of the room hear what was going outside. There were many other seals that Naruto did not recognize such as mirror seals and camouflage seals which in conjunction made it nearly impossible for the shelter to be detected unless somebody already knew where it was located. He had heard Shizune said that not even the Sharingan or the Bakugan could see what was through the seals. Naruto had been told that due to both his heritage and his status as a Jinjuriki, many people would want to either hurt him or kidnap him and thus they needed to do their best to protect him but this, what kind of threat deserved something like this shelter? Were his parents aware of whatever was happening right now? If yes, why didn't they do anything to stop it? Before it happened, Naruto had far too many questions in his head. He needed to talk to his parents whenever everything calmed down. The blonde Jinjuriki was snapped from his thoughts when he felt something tugging his sleeve of his shirt. It was Kaede, who was looking at him with worried eyes. Naruto Nisan, his mom and Shizune Nechan, going to be okay? The white haired girl asked. Naruto also wondered that. He had heard many yells, crashes, and explosions, but after some time there was nothing but silence. Still, he was aware of how strong his adoptive mother was and big sister were, and refused to believe that they were dead. Besides, he also had to be strong, or else the twins would panic. Of course they are. Mom is the strongest woman who ever lived, Naruto said, putting up the best of his smiles. You should have seen her when we train. She can bring down a tree with just a one punch. Can you imagine anybody being able to hurt her? Kaede slowly shook his head. Exactly. Y yeah, I, I guess that you're right. Kaede admitted, unconvinced. Naruto frowned. He really needed to do something. Twins would take their minds off of what was going outside. Hey, since we're going to spend some time here, how about we, we play something to pass the time? I'm sure mom and dad also left some board games or something like that. So let's take a look. Yes, both twins sat in unison and the three kids split off to cover more ground. Kaede looked in the closet but all the was there were spare clothes of many sizes, the smaller ones for her and her brother and the bigger ones for the adults. Naruto inspected that shelves but also all that he found was water and food. Hagane, however, found something behind one of the couches. Hey, take a look at this. The white-haired boy said Naruto and Kaede dropped what they were doing and rushed to the Hagane's side. In front of Hagane, there was a cupboard box full of items such as scrolls, a couple of books, worn out clothes, and used ninja tools. One of them that caught Naruto's attention was one opened envelope full of pictures. The Jinchuriki grabbed the envelope and took out the photographs from it. The twins also watched them intentively. Hey, look, that's dad! Hagane pointed out the first one was a picture of a much younger Jiraiya alongside three kids. While there was nothing remarkable about the two of them, the third one God Naruto's immediate interest, a kid with spiky blonde hair and deep blue eyes. Hey, that kid looks like a lot to you. Hello, Lord, do you like Nissan? Kaede pointed out, watching Naruto's thought. Do you know who is him? Jiraiya had told Naruto who his father was and how he trained Naruto's sense father as a sensei and how he would train Naruto as well so he could surpass his dad. A sad smile formed in his face. Yeah, I think I have an idea. Naruto put that pic at the back of the pile and watched the next one. A brown haired man with three other kids, one with long white hair, the other with long black hair and a blonde girl with a ponytail. Who are those? Kagane asked. Naruto chuckled. Oh come on, don't, you, don't tell me that you don't recognize your parents. Both eyes opened wide. Those are mom and dad? No way! Kaede exclaimed. And who is this guy? He looks scary, Hagane said as he pointed at the third teammate. Jiraiya Tsunade almost never talked about the third teammate. All what Naruto knew is that his name was Orochimaru and that he and Jiraiya had a falling out many years before Naruto was born. Another thing I'll have to ask dad about, Naruto thought. And who is this man? Naruto laughed once more. You might not recognize him, but this man is the old man Hokage himself. Really? But why isn't he wearing the Hokage hat? Kaede asked, the Hokage doesn't wear the hat all the time. I mean, we don't wear the same clothes all the time, right? But whenever I saw the Hokage, he always wear that hat, Hagane mentioned. Maybe he wasn't the Hokage yet then. Naruto wondered, but unbeknownst to him, Hiruzen was already Hokage when he was Jiraiya and Snorri Sensei. They continued watching pictures, most of them were of Jiraiya with somebody else. Though they were a couple of their biological parents, one that caught Naruto's attention was one in the which appeared with three other kids. An orange-headed boy, a red-headed boy, and 
with bearded eyes and a smiling blue haired girl. Dad never told me he was the sensei of another team. Man, I don't think I'm going to remember all the things I have to ask. Come on, Dad. Hey, look at this book, Hagane said as he grabbed one of the books from the box. Naruto paled upon hearing his brother. A few months ago, he learned what kind of books his father used to write for a living. What he read disgusted him, uh, and his respect for Jiraiya dropped considerably. Don't touch that, Naruto shouted as he snatched the book from his brother's little hands. Hey, sorry, but this book isn't for children, not for anyone but perverts. Naruto cheated as he looks at the book in disgust, but the disgust was replaced by puzzlement when he saw the title, The Tale of the Gutsy Ninja. Weird. This doesn't look like the kind of books Dad usually writes. But still, Jiraiya's name was on the cover. Naruto dared to see if his suspicious was correct and opened the book on a random page. Turned out the book wasn't smart, but apparently an adventurous story of a ninja called Naruto. Hey, you're reading the book and you said that said book isn't for children, Kaede said loudly, protesting. Sorry, I thought that this was other kind of book, but it's okay, children. You can read it. Do you want me to read it to you? Yes, both twins said in unison. Naruto sat down on the couches with one of the twins at his side. He opened the book and saw that there was a handprint detectory. This book is dedicated to my gods in Naruto. Yeah, your, go- your parents like this book so much that they decided to name you after the main character. Funny, right? Anyway, I hope you like this book as much as your parents did and I hope it also inspires you to become a great ninja. Better than the main character and definitely better than me. Your godfather Jiraiya. Not smiled tenderly upon him reading the directory. Now he really wanted to read the book and wondered why Jiraiya never showed it to him in the first place. He had to write down all the questions he had. Okay, let's start. Naruto started reading the first page. Naruto Musasabe jumped from the tree branch to tree branch while looking for his enemy. There was only one thing in his mind, protecting his shuku, his home at all costs. Pulling out a kunai, he read it for Link Break. You damn traitor! I hope you rot in. Another shink was heard. The last Uchiha from the zone was silenced by Itachi's katana. With this, it was for the squad the former clan here had slaughtered. Three which were fighting against other Konoha ninjas or guarding conquered zones, and one team which was sent to hunt him after somebody warned the rest of the clans about Itachi's killing spree. Even if none of them were even close to killing the Uchiha prodigy, Itachi was starting to re- feel tired. Reaching his pouch, he pulled a soldier pill and gulped it down. He immediately felt his strength returning, but he knew he couldn't fight what he was left of the clan by himself. Taking more than one soldier pill could be dangerous side effects, some of them which were immediate. That was the last Uchiha squad in this district. I have tracked another squad fighting against some Konoha ninja. They are three blocks away from the academy. The crow on his shoulder informed. Tachi nodded and headed to Utkarni. What about Sasuke and Shisui? They didn't move since you left. The Kurokaze clone said, that's good. Besides, there's also... Oh, oh, what do you mean? Did something happen to Sasuke or Shisui? Tachi asked, almost panicking. No. It's not that. One of my clones found the Hokage. He's fighting against your father and the Ruchihas. It doesn't appear that the Hokage is winning. What? Damn it! Where are they? At the top of Hokage Tower. Then that will be my next destination. Itachi jumped from the roof to rooftop, heading towards the Hokage Tower. I hope I can be better in their time. Limber, fire release, fireball jutsu, fire phoenix jutsu. The four remaining Uchihas had surrounded the Hokage and bombarded him with fire jutsu from a single angle. Dodging them wasn't option. Fortunately, it wasn't his only option. Earth release. Multiple Earth Domes. Rock appeared out of nowhere and formed once again a dome around the Hokage. However, another dome formed around the first one and then the third one after that. The barrage of fireballs destroyed the outer domes but left the two relatively intact. Unknown to the Uchiha, Sarutobi was forming hand seals. Earth release. Death Ring Jutsu. The second dome suddenly shattered into thousands of sharp rocks and flew outwards in every direction, impaling the four Uchiha's Wago and the other two managed to avoid all the damage with our well-replaced body replacement, but the third one wasn't fast enough and died the instant the sharp rocks pierced his body. Destroy the dome before it casts any more jutsu again. Wagago ordered the two other Uchiha's not and threw several kunais and explosive tests attached to them at the dome. The explosion shattered the rock shelter. Sarutobi managed to escape the dome before the explosion could harm him and wasting no time made more hand seals. Fire release, fire dragon flame bullet. The reason reared backwards and exhaled a massive stream of white fire. Unfortunately for Hokage, Fugaku Sharingan copied the attack. Fire release, fire dragon flame bullet. The two streams of white fire clashed against each other, pushing back and forth. 
though eventually Sarutobi's attack appeared to be the strongest. Fortunately for Sarutobi, this wasn't the one-on-one -on -one duel. Two remaining Uchiha's ran parallel to the stream of fire and unleashed a barrage of shurikens towards the Hokage. Cursing inversely, he cancelled his jutsu and jumped, avoiding the shuriken, though some of them grazed his skin and nearly getting burnt by Fugaku's attack. Upon landing, Sarutobi nearly lost his balance and fell on one knee and started to heavily breathe. You know, Hiruzen, giving all the trouble you gave me alone. I'm sure that you have you decided to keep some Anbu by your side. You would have come out of this alive, but the fight end now, Fugaku said. Why are you so sure, Fugaku-san? I already killed more than half of your men. What can possibly stop me from killing you and your remaining two squad mates? For starters, you rage. While you're strong, you clearly can't fight as much longer as before. How old are you? Seventy? People your age aren't in enough known for this resistance you know you barely have any chakra left there are also all the blood you lost already due to wounds made by kuna and shuriken that can't and couldn't dodged by you your movements have become slower and sloppier as the fight went on and you can't barely stand on your feet and lastly the fact that you didn't realize that i trapped you in a kujutsu and my men already moved for their kill goku said making a hand seal dispelling the kinjutsu suddenly sarutobi found his chest being impaled by two katanas being held by Fugaku's two remaining men, the elementium started dissipating in a cloud of smoke. He felt what little energy had he had left fading away. In a few seconds, he fell on the ground, dead, not having enough time for energy to utter some word last words. You've been a strong opponent, he was in sorrow to me. History books will remember your violent last stand. I can promise you that. Lingui, Tachi san, I'm afraid that tell that the third Okage had died. Kurakaze clone said, Damn it! Tachi. Lord is cursed. If the Okage would have lost a couple more minutes, how many men has my father with him? Two. Tachi, are you planning on fighting him? Even with the soldier pills, you're pretty worn out. Yes, I do. And he fought the third Okage. He is also way more drained than I am. I believe I can defeat him. With my father out, the Uchiha's will be leaderless. The remaining squad will be destroyed or forced to surrender. The go will come to an end. I see. That's your major decision. Is there something else I can do to assist you? Not anymore, Kurekaze-sama. You've been of great help here. But I can continue alone. Please watch over Sasuke and Shisui until this madness ends. As you wish, Itachi-san. Good luck. The crow clone said and flew away. Thank you. Itachi couldn't help but wonder what was he going to tell Sasuke when he ever he everything was over. After all, he was going to kill their father, even if it was for a greater good. He was afraid that Sasuke wouldn't see it that way. No, I can't think that way now. If I'm not confused, I won't be able to put an end to this. This is all my fault for not acting sooner. Itachi inwardly said, pushing his conflicted thoughts aside for Kimi Sasuke. Upon reaching the Fokage Tower, Itachi pulled several shurikens from his pouch. Grabbing a handful of each in a few jumps, he managed to reach the roof, leaping over his father and his two unsuspecting teammates and unsheathing the rain of metals. Fukaku managed to see Itachi in time of activating his shuriken and using his katana, deflecting the shurikens aimed at him. The two other Uchiha's, their guards lowered the, due to their apparent victory and their senses mentally dulled due by the exhaustion and wounds received didn't notice the newcomer and died almost instantly. Itachi landed in front of him, his katana on hand. Look who showed up, Goku said in, in disgust. But I'm afraid that you're too late, son. The old man is no more. To save the Hokage, may, but to end this madness, not even by a long shot. Itachi calmly complied. I've already killed half of the clan, the other half being dealt by the Konoha forces as we speak. Sorry, father, but you already lost. And now I shall execute you for starting this insurrection against Konoha, killing the Hokage and causing the death of so many Konoha ninjas. Wago face turned into angry grimace. You insolent child! I knew you were rebellious, but to see such a betrayal coming from my own flesh and blood, the others were right about you. I merely banished you because I thought that you only needed some time alone to get your thoughts in order, but yes, I was too soft. If you weren't my son, I would have probably thrown you into a cell and tossed the key away, which is what I should have done in the first place. I'm not a traitor, father. My loyalty has been, and I will always be with the village. It is you who betrayed Konha by sparking this insurrection that won't bring anything good for any of the parties involved. Why did you do it, father? Why? Why? I did it for you, you ungrateful child. For both you and Sasuke to give the clan a better future. The Uchiha clan would have withered and died under the constant pressure and oppression of Konha. But now, you just doomed us all. Stop spinning and pinning the blame of your actions on me, father. This wasn't ever, even and never meant to end well. I merely accelerated the inevitable and cut some losses. Had I not done anything, this would have degenerated into a full-on civil war that would end up with Konha's destruction. My only regret is not acting sooner. I can't have Konha. Then Konha would have the Sharingan anymore. I'll gather the survivors and start over again somewhere else. We will even create our own village, the Uchiha can 
thrive as a clan again. You are right that the Uchiha will thrive again, but they won't do it under your command. Daji firmly stated as he raised his katana. This time for words has passed. No, it's time for you to pay for your treason. No, it's time for me to correct my mistakes. I won't let you jeopardize the future of our... No, of my clan. Father and son dashed towards each other, staring each other in the eyes. When they were within their striking rate, they moved their blades. Itachi aimed at Fugaku's gut and Fugaku aimed at Itachi's neck. Fugaku's sword hit its mark. The first Itachi was stopped on his tracks. The moment Fugaku's blade jammed on his neck. I'm sorry, son. A single tear fell from Fugaku's eyes. He suddenly felt his eyes burning as if his showering gun changed into something else. However, Itachi suddenly turned into a murder of crows and flew away in every direction. Fugaku saw a blade thrust into his chest. His heart had been pierced. It's me who is sorry, Itachi replied, tears coming from his eyes. As life started to slowly leave his body, the so to be former Uchiha Patrick was invaded by an overwhelming sense of regret, as if the hate and anger towards Kona that filled his heart and mind was dispelled and could see things as they were, and realized that both Hiruz and Itachi's words were right. Why is the only in death that I could find clarity? Fuaku bitterly thought, Itachi, take care of Sasuke. I will, father. I will. And thus, Fugaku Uchiha left the world of the living. Itachi removed his hands from his katana handles and Fugaku's lifeless body fell on the ground. Itachi also fell on his knees and started to cry inconsolably. All the rage, all the sorrow, all the emotions that he had been bottled up for so much time couldn't be held anymore. But his grief was interrupted by sharp pain attacking his eyes. They felt like they were burning. The same feeling that his father experienced seconds before dying. He then remembered a conversation he had with Sishui about the Sharingan evolving after experiencing the loss of loved one. Itachi had awakened the Mangekyo Sharingan. Ugh. A soft crone snapped Itachi out of his trance. He turned around and saw that it was coming from Hokage. Hokage-sama. Are you alive? Itachi shouted as he rushed towards the body of the fallen Hokage. He got no answer, but started to be moved a little. Okay, try to keep your energy. I'll find some help. Itachi picked up some of his blood and made a few hands. Summoning Jutsu from a cloud of smoke, one of Kurokaze's clones appears. So soon? What's going on, Itachi-san? The blackbird said, before noticing the dying Hokage, find a medic. Please, we don't have much time. Yes, immediately. Nothing there to say in no time. To ask the question, Kurokaze flied away, while mentally transmitting the orders to the rest of the clones. Much to Itachi's bewilderness, a minute later, one of the crows returned, carrying a large slug between his claws. Link break. The sun was starting to emerge from the east, while Sonata and Shizune were channeling their chakra throughout the immense healing network. They were surprised to see one of the Katsuyu clones crawling as fast as she could towards them. Sonata Sama, Shizune Sama, the small slug said. The Kurutat has been stopped. Combat had ceased already. We have healed all the wounded, and there are no more people in danger, the slug announced. Those are good news indeed. Thanks for your help again, Katsuyu Sama. Shizune smiled for the first time, beginning of the coup. Then she looked back at Tsunade, who looked like she was going to collapse at any time soon. Come on, Tsunade, some we need to take you to the hospital. The kids. Tsunade remember, check the kids first. Right, I'll be back in a minute. Tsunade said to Shizune. And Shizune went back into the house, and much to their relief, she saw that the secret trapdoor remained intact. She unlocked the seals and entered the shelter, but she saw that was the cute she had to restrain herself from squealing. The three kids, the three kids were asleep on a Couch, Naruto in the middle with Hagen and Kairi resting their heads on Naruto's shoulders with Naruto's hands wrapped around each of them. Naruto had an open book on his lap. Naruto did his best to try to make his siblings not panic. Oh, so you're such a good big brother, Naruto. The medic thought as her mouth formed a sweet smile. It almost pains me having to wake you up. After waking the kids up, the four of them headed outwards and much to their horror, they saw Sonata lying on the ground motionlessly. Sonata Sama, Mom! She's still alive, the Katsuyu clone quickly said, as if guessing the collective thoughts, but her chakra is nearly depleted. She needs assistance as soon as possible. She's nodded. The come on kids, help me bring your mom to the hospital. Link breaks. Sasuke awoke next day as usual. He got dressed and got up from his room. His house seemed unusually silent. The young Uchiha felt that there was something wrong and going on. Mother? Father? Sasuke asked, but got no response. Weird, his parents always got up at least an hour before he did. He went to the lower floor and inspected the rest of the house and found it empty. Then he heard a noise coming from upstairs. The black-haired boy rushed back to the upper floor and saw Itachi coming in through one of the windows. Itachi? Sasuke asked, puzzled. He would be thrilled to see his brother if it wasn't for the fact that his clothes were soaked in blood, his face was red, and his entire body was trembling. What? What are you doing here? Sasuke. Let's go down. There's 
there's something important I need to tell you. That morning Sasuke awakened his Sharingan. Link break. Thanks to Itachi's and Sonata's efforts, the Uchiha Kuta thought was suffocated by the times of the sun trolls, and many people were saved from what would have been a certain death. Among them were Hiruz and Saratobi, while in critical condition managed to keep his life thanks to Katsuyu clone. Kurokaze managed to bring until active actual medic arrived. Many couriers were sent to find the Jonin outside the village, urging them to drop or finish they could whatever missions they were doing and return at once in order to help with the reconstruction efforts. Upon hearing the news of their failure and their leaders that the future has left decided to go down fighting rather than surrendering, since they knew that they would be executed anyway from committing an act of high treason. The mercenary and criminals who didn't escape Konha when it became obvious that they were fighting a losing battle decided to surrender instead. Those who had confirmed kills would be executed, while the rest of them would be sent to prison. A mass funeral was held in honor of all the people, both ninjas and civilians, who were killed during the insurrection. While many people died, the most notable deaths were those of the clan elders and leaders, such as Hiyashi Yuga and Yonichi Yamanaka. Naruto did his best to comfort Hinata, who, like his mother and sister, spent the entire ceremony crying their eyes out. Hinata's grief was contagious, and since Naruto ended up crying as well, even if he barely knew Hiyashi, it could be said that he could feel Hinata's pain. Naruto also recognized three of his classmates, Shikamaru Nara, Choji Yakamichi, and Ino Yamanaka, crying profusely as they were standing in front of Inoichi's grave. While Ino's grief was understandable, he didn't understand why Shikamaru and Choji were crying like that. Naruto knew that the three clans were so close, and Inoichi was an honorable uncle to both Shikamaru and Choji. There was also another funeral held after the main one for Fugaku and Mikoto Uchiha at Itachi's request. Only Itachi and Shisui and Sasuke, the three remaining Uchihas, attended the ceremony. Link break. After the coup was quelled, there was an air of dread and helplessness impregnating the very air of Konoha, something that it wasn't felt like since the QB attack eight years ago. The near death of the third Okage was a huge blow to the population, especially to the ninja. Not only was he loved and respected, but unlike his successor, who was killed by what most people believed it was a mindless monster, Hiruzen Saratopi was almost killed by the head of one of the most respected clans of Konoha. Besides that, many people couldn't help but wonder what was going on and what was going to be of Konoha now. Losing one of its strongest clan was nothing but the tip of its iceberg. The Yuga clan was the most numerous clan of Konoha had lost nearly 40% of its members and Konoha as a whole had lost almost 30% of its manpower, most of them tuning in a special Jonin. These losses coupled with the lack of Okage made many people fear that other villages would take the advantage of it and invade them, and the only thing they could do was pray for such things to not happen, and that Konoha would elect a Hokage soon that would recover their former glory. Link break. Two days after the coup, Jirai rushed through the hospital halls, fearing the, for the worst. The Dotsani had an unpleasant sense of deja vu when a ninja courier ran into him and delivered the news of the Uchiha coup and the critical state of the third Okage. While the news were worrying on their own, the courier also mentioned that Tsunade, after being seriously wounded, used her immense healing network to help the people fighting against the Uchiha and their mercenaries. She was now in critical condition as well. Eight years ago, he lost one of his students. He could possibly lose his sensei, who he loved as father. He never met. He could lose his wife too now. After making sure that he was in the right wing, Jara started to check the doors until he found the right one. He slammed the door open and much to his relief saw that his former teammate, current wife, and mother of his children was alive and seemingly well. Shizune, Naruto, Hagane, and Kaida was present too, but he wouldn't register their presence later. Dad! Naruto said, perking up. Hey! Look who's back, Sonata weakly mentioned, looking at Jiraiya with a small smile. Jiraiya didn't say anything, but rushed to hug her. Ah, uh, not so hard. Sonata shouted, wincing in pain. I've been impaled, you know. Sorry, sorry. Jiraiya frantically replied, breaking the hug. It's that when they told me what happened to you, I feared for the worst. And seeing you alive and well, yeah, yeah, I know, Sonata replied dismissively. Though they, they mentioned that it would only be a few weeks before they will let me out of the CPA. She added enthusiastically. Jiraiya smiled in return. Then he noticed something weird about Sonata's forehead. Almost, mostly, her strength of 100 healings looked different. It was bigger than usual, with uneven sides and angles. It almost looks like a bad, badly done drawing. Sonata, what happened to your seal? Oh, this? She asked, pointing at the forehead. Well, Kaide 
was sad for me, losing my diamond. So, so I made a, a new one. The white-haired girl proudly said while holding a purple marker. And mom made me another one too. Shreya noticed that his daughter also had a diamond drawn on her forehead. Well, this one looks better drawn. Shreya couldn't help but smile at her daughter's cutesy antics. Jaya, can you put some privacy seals around the room? I need to talk about something. The slug princess asked. Jaya nodded and after a few minutes, the tour sage indicated that it was now safe to talk without fear of anything. Sradisama, do you want me to take the kids aside? Shinya asked, guessing what the topic of conversation was going to be. Yes, please. Take them to eat something. You should eat too, Shizune. Shizune nodded and left Sanade and Chura alone in the room. After Shizune, I and I dealt with the Uchiha sent to arrest us. Somebody else appeared, a masked man wearing an Akatsuki cloak. Said man had a showering gun and could use wood release. What? Chura asked in display. But that's... And that's not the worst part. The man fall flat out admitted that he was the one behind the QB attack eight years ago. He said that he was using the Kure Thar as a smoke screen to get the Naruto and finish the job. Chira was speechless. He knew that the person behind such attacks and acts had to be someone powerful, but this was beyond his wildest guesses. He couldn't help but feel worried about Naruto. If such a man was after him, Naruto needed to be strong. Hell, Konohawa as a whole needed to be stronger. Fortunately, somebody was about to handle him the necessary tools for such a task. There was a knock on the door. Shira deactivated the privacy seals, but Sunari told whoever was outside to come in. It was an Anbu with a beer mask. Shira summoned the Council of Elders, requires your presence at the Hokage Tower. The Anbu announced. The Toad Sage groaned while a frown appearing on his face. Ugh. Wonder what those old farts want now. Sarutobi Sense is no longer able to continue as Hokage. It isn't obvious. They want you to take this place. Sunade mentioned. <laughs> Me? Hokage? That's a good one, Hime. Jira chuckled genuinely. There's thanks for the joke. I really needed a laugh anyway. I'll come to see you later. Jira gave Sunade a kiss on the lips before leaving the room. Ring break, Hokage Tower. Oh come, you guys aren't joking. Jira turned into a grimace on his face. Sitting in front of him were Hamura and Koharu. Sort of his former teammates and later council members after retiring from ninja duty. Did we look like we were joking? Hamura crossed his arms tonight. Well, you guys look like you didn't even know the meaning of the word fun. That's why it was all such more like shocking. Jaya retorted, making the elders to prawn. Listen, Jaya, we lost two Hokages in less than a decade. Not to mention our recent losses. We need to appoint a new Hokage as soon as possible. And sadly for everybody, you are our best candidate. Kohar said, come on, I'd suck at being a Hokage. There has to be a candidate better than me. Jaya protested. Danza san also talked with us about giving him our support to become Hokage. A better candidate than not a sociopath. Listen, we aren't going to support you because we like you, or even because we think that you'll make a great Hokage. We're going to do it because what Ruzin wanted. Amura calmly stated, Listen, I know that Sarutobi Sensei had faith in me as a ninja, but being a Hokage, I find that hard to believe. Or did he wake up from his coma already and told you that? Then it's a good thing you don't have to believe just us. Amura replied while leaving a scroll in front of the Sani. Found this on Hiruzen's desk. Maybe you should read it. Skeptical Jaya tooled the scroll and opened it. It appeared to be sort of his last will. He suddenly started to read. If you're reading this, then I'm more than likely dead, probably by the hands of Fukaku Uchiha or one of his clansmen. Many years ago, we have some evidence that suspected that at least an Uchiha was responsible for the QB attack eight years ago. Some believe that it was the whole clan. I didn't share this opinion and even started an investigation to exonerate the clan. Still, it seems that the word of this was made public. The populace of Konoha distrusted the Uchiha and the Uchiha resented Konoha in return. I tried my best to solve this solution peacefully but my effort failed and then again, I can't think what I could have done save have all the clans swiftly executed by a group of assassins and honestly, I can see myself doing that and continue to be able to sleep at night. And that doesn't change the fact that I failed this village. Now I see that maybe I should have never taken back the Hokage's head after I was unable to handle the third ninja warrior better. I tried to think of this as a second chance to fix my past mistakes, but in the end, all I did was make more mistakes than before. Now I see that I should have appointed either Chiraya Sunare as the fifth Hokage when they returned to take care of Minato's son, Naruto. 
But now I'm going to fix one of my mistakes. Jurassic Tsunari, I know that sooner or later you will be reading this. I want one of you to take a step forward and lead this village. Both of you have the perfect combination of power, experience and wisdom I like to think I have. But without my old age to hinder you, you'll have to think that this is too much for you. But I have faith in you. Konha needs you more than ever. And if the years you spent here didn't awaken your love for this village, do it at least for Naruto. Try to keep the village in one piece until he's old enough to take the mentality. I believe that there's some truth behind that little rascal's posts. I feel that Fukaku and his Uchiha are getting closer. So I'll wrap this up. First of all, do not lose hope and keep the feel of fire in your hearts. That's the key for Konoha to recover the glory. It will inevit inevitably lose this night. Second, I know for a fact that at least two Uchihas are not part of the insurrection. Do not ostracize them and any other Uchiha not involved in this, or blame them for the sins of their misguided clansmen. And lastly, since I won't see them again, I want you to tell my sons and grandchildren that I love them more than anything, and that both Duwaku and me will watch over them from the pure world. Here's in Sarada with Hirtokage of Konoha, Link Break. The two council members watched intently how Itra's expression changed after he read the whole letter, especially the part that talked about him and Tsunade. Once they guessed that Sanin finished reading, they spoke again. Like the letter says, the other candidate for Hokage would be your wife, but she will be stuck on a hospital bed for quite some time. And if what the Anbu told us is right, and we can't wait that much, Kohar said. Besides, we also believe that taking Tsunade away from the hospital to place her on the Hokage office would be a decisive and disservice to the village. Not only our healthcare has improved considerably since she took charge of the hospital, but the number one medic, as well as their overall skills, has increased considerably since her return. Amira explained, You made it sound as if only sit at home and write my novels. I do work for the village too, you know. I'm the main intelligence gathering of the village. Jaya yeah, protested, True, but I'm sure that you can send someone else to meet your spies or train other peoples in the art of collecting information. But we can't just ask a medic of Sonata's caliber to stay at an office doing paperwork. Jaya groaned loudly. Part of him was already regretting coming back to the village. Taking care of Naruto was doable, but being Hokage? Not in a thousand years. But then again, he thought of handing the Hokage mentality to Danzo was nightmarish to say the least. Signing in defeat, Jaya was forced to admit that he had only one choice. All right, I'll become the new Hokage. Excellent. We'll announce your appointment in the afternoon. Lingbrae. Later that day, some time during afternoon, Jaya had never been so nervous in his whole life. Well, maybe the day before his wedding. But then again, he was only marrying the one woman. This was like being married to the entire village. While the two elders were talking to the people gathered around the tower, Shizune was adjusting his ropes and making sure that he was presentable. Naruto, Kaide, and Hagane were present as well. So, how do I look? Naruto asked. Absolutely imposing, Jirasama. Shizune beamed. Jira, however, frowned in return. This is Shizune. I'm still trying to work out what kind of relationship you and Shizune he may have. But drop the honorifics when talking to me. Okay, Jira is enough. Misani replied. He really wanted to tell her that for a long time. You know that you about to become Hokage. I don't see that happening anytime soon. She's in a retorted, never losing her smallest. Try skull deepened. And without further ado, meet the fifth Hokage. Hamura's voice said. That's your cue, Jirasama. Go and impress them. She's in a padded. Try on the back. Yeah, you can do it, Dad. How can I cheer? We'll be cheered for you from here. Kaede adored and added. Soon we'll become the second best Hokage this village had ever seen. Naruto said. Jai looked at him and puzzled. Second best? Who is the best one then? Oh, never mind. I see what you did there. Naruto chuckled in return. Wasting no time, Jira walked towards the edge of the tower and took a look at the huge crowd below him. They were silent, expecting him to say something. He better not keep them waiting. People of Konoha, Jira began his speech. Usually, the appointment of new Hokage is a reason to celebrate. Yet, I can see that nobody here feels in the mood to celebrate anything. Konoha went through one of its darkest moments, second only to the QB attack. Many good ninja died, parents lost their children, children lost their parents. However, I ask you not to be consumed by grief and stand strong because we already went through something similar not too long ago and we were back on our feet in no time and this time it won't be different. Our beloved third Hokage, my sensei might not be with us anymore but his will, the will of his fire still is. The third Hokage would have all of you to move on with your lives, to be happy, to keep the village strong and standing. That's why I'm going to honor my master's last request and become Hokage and work as hard as I can to honor his legacy. And that's why 
you're going to do likewise. So everybody who wants to harm us know that this village can resist anything. People started to cheer loudly once Jura finished his speech. All present members of Jura's family smiled at him. He's always been such a good orator. It's a pity Sonarisama isn't here to see him. She would have loved it. She's in a thought. Think break. Orochimaru's pain base, land of rice fields. After much time waiting, Obito appeared from his trademark swirling vortex and looked as if he had been trampled by an stamp stampede of mad elephants. His cloak was completely torn, his mask was nearly broken, his body had multiple bruises, and a whole arm was missing. Another Akatsuki member was expecting his arrival. Welcome back, Obito kun. Orochimaru sardonically greeted chuckling. It seems a Sonata he may made a number on you, didn't she? <laughs> First minute kun and now her? You need to pick your battles better. Obito kun shut up! Obito crawled as he took his broken mask and tossed it away and prepared the operation table. Yes, it looks like you need some surgery, as if there is no tomorrow. You know, Orochimaru, if I didn't need you, I would have killed you a long time ago. Obito snarled, angry at the snake's on his taunt. If you think so, Orochimaru shrugged at no point dropping ends a nervy smile. But I don't need to ask how to main mission went. Did you at least get something of use out of this mess? Without saying anything, Obito pulled out three scrolls from the inside. He torn crook and tossed them to Orochimaru. The yellow-eyed man unsealed its content. The first one was a pair of palt of Byakugan eyes. The second one was just a single pair of Byakugan eyes. And the last one was single Sharingan eye. A nice loot, but I think mine's is better. Is there a reason for these Byakugans are separated from the rest? Yes, they are the eyes of the clan head. You can have some of others if you want, but I need those eyes specifically, so do not touch them. While Orochimaru was tempted to ask more about that, he felt that Obito wouldn't mind be, mind be in the mood to satisfy his curiosity. Not that it mattered, he could learn about Obito's secret plans on his own later. By the way, how about the modifications I made to your body? Even if they weren't of any help in the end, did you notice any improvements? Yes. It took me much less effort to use word release, but I still can't give many jutsus all the power I need. Baby steps, Obito-kun. Baby steps. Sometimes science doesn't advance as fast as we wish. That's why my first priority was to find a way to prolong my lifespan beyond its natural limit. Then you should make to find a way to improve my body even further your first priority now. At least as long as you want me to continue providing you with more genetic material from Hashirama. You're hurting my feelings, Obito-kun. My work always produces the best results. So, what shall it be? The Bakugan or the Sharingan? The latter. I see. Do you miss having the two of them? Because I certainly would have chose the former. For additional versatility, you know. I have my reasons, Orochimaru. Now prepare the damn operation table. Of course, Obito. Wasn't going to tell the snake sign about Shizui's eyes, specifically with special priorities, nor anything Akartsky for that matter. Trust wasn't something you could find in an organization almost exclusively composed of criminals. A few minutes later, Obito was trapped to the operation table. Orochimaru looked at him from above with a sadistic smile. If only all his test subjects had Obito enthusiasm and eagerness. Alright, let's start with this eye. Then I'll fix the rest of your body. Do you want anesthetics? Orochimaru pulled out a syringe full of greenish liquid. You should know better already. Orochimaru spat. Obito spat at him. No more anesthetics then. The snake Sanit put the syringe away and pulled out a scalpel. Then let me tell you that this is going to hurt a lot. But you should know that already, shouldn't you? Seize your attempts at intimidating me, snake. I don't feel pain anymore. Hmph. Huh. I wonder what our leader would say about that. As this is where I'm going to be leaving this part, guys. I hope you like this one. And if you do, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And this is Apollo Chiha, and I'm signing out. Peace.